Welcome to Beardy, Bruce Lee Central. Hey everybody, it's Birdie here. What's going on, guys? Wow, look, it's Michael Jackson and Bruce Lee. Wow. Well, not really, it's just a fake. It never happened. Bruce Lee never met Michael Jackson, unfortunately. But they could have met. They could have met, but they didn't meet. Okay, so guys, today we are going to go through a day in the life of Bruce Lee. So we already know that Bruce Lee was a workout holic, a workaholic. But let's take a look at the other side of his life. So here, for example, this is Bruce Lee's business partner in his Jeet Kune Do franchise. So a lot of Bruce Lee's time was spent expanding Jeet Kune Do. He had several schools all over the United States. They started off in Seattle and spread. So as time passed by, the school started expanding. Bruce Lee started uh, hiring teachers for his schools. And that meant that he had to sp spend a lot of time teaching those teachers to become Jeet Kune Do specialists. And that's where we get to the point of him meeting other martial artists like here in this picture, Chuck Norris and his good, good, good friend, James Coburn. So when Bruce Lee's name started getting, you know, spread around, uh, a lot of stars like James Coburn here heard about Bruce Lee and his new philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, and they wanted to train with Bruce Lee. Not only superstars like Steve McQueen and James Coburn, but also seasoned martial artists like Chuck Norris. They wanted to expand from only doing, for example, Taekwondo and Karate. And Chuck Norris was intelligent and smart enough to see this. He saw that martial arts is evolving and he wanted to train with Bruce Lee. And that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest and greatest steps he, he did in his career. So here you see James Coburn and Bruce Lee, and they became really good friends, like really, really close. And James Coburn was, would spend the night at Bruce Lee's place. In the morning, they would wake up and they would work out together. Uh, Bruce Lee would write down uh, lists and he would give him to James Coburn lists of things to do in his spare time, like a, a, a custom uh, training regime for James Coburn. And yeah, they, they became really good friends. And you had Steve, Steve McQueen, you had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you have Joe Lewis, you had Jim Kelly, you had Chuck Norris, and all of these guys. Remember, at the time, James Coburn and Steve McQueen were like the superstars of their era. It's like Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt of their era. So, I mean, Bruce Lee was hanging out with these guys, but they weren't just simply hanging out and partying. They were actually doing martial arts together. That's the really cool part. They were learning Jeet Kune Do from Bruce Lee. So they were friends, they were hanging out, they were doing stuff, but primarily they were doing Jeet Kune Do. And the other side of Bruce Lee's life is this. It's like photo shoots, TV appearances, like he was a massive star in Hong Kong, Bruce Lee. Massive, massive star. So he had dozens of TV appearances all around China and Hong Kong. And then eventually in the, in the 70s, he started doing interviews and TV appearances in the US too. Uh, when he started getting famous in the US after he did the Green Hornet show. And... Yeah, so he he had this, uh, as you can see, these photo shoots, these TV appearances, and pub publicity shots where he would send them to agencies in the U.S. Because remember, guys, Bruce Lee was trying to break into Hollywood. This is, for example, this picture here is from Bruce Lee in Hong Kong, where he was a massive star. But in the US, he wasn't a massive star. He was starting to gain some traction. He was starting to become a well-known name because of the Green Hornet show. But still, he was. there was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, issues to break into, especially when you were an Asian guy trying to break into Hollywood. It was almost impossible being a foreigner from Asia trying to break uh, into Hollywood. So 
he broke that mold with Enter the Dragon. And that was his massive, massive breakthrough. But the problem is that he passed away just as the film was done filming and post-production was done. So he, he, he died. He passed away. It's so sad because that was his ma major breakthrough in Hollywood. And yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's just so sad. And... I mean, this is the end result. If you look at this picture, this is the end result of... Because this is in Enter the Dragon. This is the last full body shot of Bruce Lee ever taken. Look at that body, guys. Just look at that body. It's not often you can look at a picture and just think, Oh my God, it's steel. His body is just made of steel. And that was the end result. This is just a few weeks before he passed away. This photo was taken. He was in insane shape. And this is the culmination of 14 years of Jeet Kune Do. Right there, guys. 14 years of Jeet Kune Do. 10 hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours, 14 hours a day sometimes, 365 days a year. That's a typical day in the life of Bruce Lee. He woke up. He trained for like six, five or six hours. He did writing, creative writing. And he went and hanged out with James Coburn, Steve McQueen, his friends and his family. Of course, he had two children. And yeah, that's that, man. And that's the end result right there. So thanks for listening, guys. See you guys later. Bye.